Yes. Hallelujah. Thankful for Thank the blessings God. of God. My, my, my. So many blessings. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Undeserving. Amen. 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 Yes. Undeserving. Amen. That's what Amen. we are. Amen. Hallelujah. We are. You can. Sister Cindy going to sing the whole song. Go ahead. Open your Bible this morning to Proverbs, the 18th chapter. Proverbs, the 18th chapter. And you can hold it for just a minute because I want to talk for a few minutes before we get there. But Proverbs, the 18th chapter. I'll give you a minute or two to get there. Hallelujah. I want to talk to you this morning about friends. In particular, one friend. Hallelujah. But Abraham Lincoln once said that the better part of one's life consists of his friendships. All right. The great poet Ralph Waldo Emerson said, the only way to have a friend is to be one. Amen. Come on. And in this life, we all have friends. Yes. Some of them closer than others. Right. There's all kinds of friends. You know, those there's fair weathered friends. True. When things are going good, I, and I wish I'd have wrote this scripture down, but there is a scripture in the Bible that talks about a friend, mm. or talks about uh, one who gives away things has friends. <laughs> Amen. All right. So, in other words, there are friends that they're your friend for what they can get out of you. Right. Amen. Yeah. There are friends that I guess fair weather friends and good time friends would be the same thing, but All when right. things are going good. Mm -hmm. When you have something to give to them, when it benefits them, they're your friend. Right. Amen. Come on. And in this life, we have had those kind of friends. I guess we have those kind of friends today. Amen. But during this life, if you are blessed enough to know a true friend, mm -hmm. it is a blessing indeed. Amen. Amen. Someone who's not in it for what they can get. Amen. Come on. Someone who you don't know, hear from them just when they need to borrow something from you. Amen. Come on. But someone who's there to pray for you. Amen. Someone who's there to lift you up when you're down. Yes. Right. Someone, Brother Sleece, who's there to share with you the Word of God when you need an encouragement. A push when you need a push. A pull when you need a pull. Yeah. Amen. Come on. An encouraging word when you need it. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And there are friends in this life. And yesterday morning in my study of the Word of God, I found myself in the book of Job. And I thought, well, maybe this is where the Lord wants to give us something this week. And as I read the book of Job, and as I was blessed, and as I was seeing the different things that Job went through, and as I saw his friends begin to gather around him, <clears throat> amen, I, out of one of the many things that I gleaned from my study yesterday morning, Brother Dave, was that with friends like Job had, poor old Job didn't need no enemies. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. <laughs> so it got me to thinking, not so much for us to preach on Job, but to preach on friendship a little bit this morning. Yes, sir. Amen. And that these men, when Job was down and needed them the most. Right. And maybe, just maybe, I don't know, I can't get into Job's head, but maybe when he looked up from his sackcloth and ashes, mm -hmm. and he saw his friends coming, Come maybe he thought, oh, praise God. Amen. <laughs> Oh, just when I needed them. Here they come. Here come. But they wouldn't carry no potluck. All right. Amen. All right. They didn't have no covered dish come on. to make Job's journey a little easier. Come on, say no, 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 no. Come on. They were full of judgment and self-righteousness. Right. Amen. And they called Job everything from a hypocrite to a liar. Mm -hmm. It's your fault, Job, that you're in this situation. You have sinned. And we all know that's not true because we read the book. Amen. God himself said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job that there is none like him? Right. Amen. Amen. There is none like him. True. So we all know that wasn't so. So these guys were way off. Amen. Have you ever had one of those friends who just felt it in the spirit that they needed to tell you something? Yes. Well, they felt in the spirit, all right, but it wasn't the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. They all sit down like they like you see in the Western movies when the Indians sit around and share the peace pipe. And they have a little powwow. Mm -hmm. He said, now it was time to pick on Job. Yeah. There he sat. He done lost his family. Yeah. Everybody but his bickering and his, his belittling wife. Yeah. Lost his children, lost his cattle, lost his wealth, lost his now he's losing his health. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And I found in those passages of scripture. 
The same way that Satan attacked Job, he attacks us today. Right. He attacked Job in his finances. True. He attacked Job in his family. Come on. And he attacked Job in his body. Right. Amen? Come on. Think about that. What are the things that you get fought the most? Amen? Right. True. And last but not least, he fought him in his spirit. Amen? Yeah. Because on. when he can attack your home, when he can attack your family, Come on, when he can attack your health, when he yeah. can attack your finances, right. it makes you more vulnerable Amen. spiritually. Amen? You got it. So he had attacked him and all he was in. Here he sits. Bowls all over him. Right. Sitting in sackcloth and ashes and scraping his bowls. And here comes his buddies. Come on. And his friends say, Job, it's your fault. Mm -hmm. You've sinned. Mm -hmm. Something bad wrong with you. Mm -hmm. God is against you. Yeah. Right. You have done some terrible iniquity. Mm -hmm. So in this, in reading about these friends of Job, I got to thinking about friends. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on. I got to thinking about in this life how that we have friends and thank God for them. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. How that right at the time when Job needed his friends the most, they uh -huh. weren't there. Instead of helping, they fanned the flame. Instead of helping him carry his burden, they put a little bit more load on it. Amen. Come on. Yeah. And maybe you today face same of the same things yourself. Yeah. And as a minister, I hear this all the time. Nobody cares about me. Mm -hmm. I have nobody. I'm all alone. I have nobody to talk to. I don't have any friends. Nobody loves me. Mm. Anybody ever heard that before? Amen. Anybody ever thought that before? Amen. Well, I want us to look into the Word of God today where we will find a friend that is not a fair-weathered friend. Where we will find a friend that Brother Sleese is not just a good time Charlie friend. Amen. Oh. Not just someone, not one of them give me what you got friends. Amen. But the book of Proverbs, the 18th chapter, the 24th verse. Proverbs 18 and 24. In a world where people feel like they don't have anybody. In a world where people feel like nobody cares. Yeah. In a world that people feel like that Nobody wants to hear what they got to say. Amen? Oh. I wish I had a dollar for every time I heard those kind of things. Yeah. I'd be a rich man today. Amen? The Bible says in Proverbs 18 and 24, a man that had friends must show himself friendly. Amen? Now we get that. You know, it was kind of hard for the Grinch to have friends. For Scrooge to have friends. So if we want to have friends... We need to show ourselves friendly. Amen. Amen. And that goes along with what the great poet said. The only way to have a friend is to be a friend. Amen. Right. To be one. Then it makes this statement. Oh, and I love it this morning. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Amen. 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 One of the commentators quoted from the book of Deuteronomy, the 13th chapter, the 6th verse, where it talks about a friend that is as a man that is to a man as his own soul. Sort of like the relationship that Jonathan and David had together. Mm -hmm. Amen. And the closeness that they felt. There have been times in my life that I felt that way. Amen. That you feel like you you just you just know that this person is your friend. Amen. And I have a few of those today. Probably count them all on one hand. Amen. But I got a few of those today. Thank God. And the Bible puts a great importance on having a friend. That's why it says it's two are better than one. Because they have a good reward of their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. Here we found old Job, he had fallen. Amen. And instead of picking him up, they kicked him in the gut and pushed him down. Right. Amen. True. So the Bible puts great importance on friend. It says the one, if he falls, the other one will lift him. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth. For he hath not another to help him up. I don't know about you, but there have been times I wish I had been alone Amen. when I fell. Right. Amen? True. Because the weight of their foot on my back didn't help matters none. Amen. But there is a friend today that sticks closer than a brother. Right. So as much as emphasis as the Bible puts on us having a friend in this life, like Brother Sleese is my friend, Brother David is my friend, Sister right. Cindy is my friend, amen? Right. 
As much as emphasis the Bible puts on that, it, also, it puts even more of an emphasis on the fact that we have a friend today that will never leave us, that will never forsake us, that will go with us all the way to the end. A friend that sticks closer than a brother. Amen. A friend that is there whenever you got money. A friend that is there whenever you don't. Amen. A friend that is there whenever you're going through the pain. And a friend that is there when you're going through the glory. Amen. Somebody that will hold your hand. Hallelujah. And cross over Jordan with you one of these days. Amen. I'm talking about Jesus this morning. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. When all others have turned their back on you. When every arm of the flesh has fallen. When mama turned away. When her brother turned away. When your sister turned away. Jesus is there. Amen. In the midst of the battle when the dust clears. And everyone else has forsaken you. There you stand. And there stands Jesus. Amen. He's a friend today that sticks closer than a brother. Yes. You see, prison bars can't keep him out. Right. True. Intensive care units cannot keep him out. Oh. He's there when you need him. Yes. You can stand upon his word. That's the kind of God that I serve this morning. He is my friend. Amen. He is my friend. True. Amen. True. Hallelujah. He is your friend. Yes, sir. He's the friend that sticks Very closer indeed. than a brother. Amen. Come on. And we all, during this life, go through right. times of solitude. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have to be brought to that place. Come on. We won't blame everybody else. Mm -hmm. And I'm not excusing how people treat us. Right. But sometimes we have to be brought to that place so that we realize we can't count but on one. Mm -hmm. Not completely. Your friend, your very best friend, with the very best intentions and actions that they have, sooner or later will fail you. Yes, sir. Amen? True. Sooner or later they will fail you. Right. Not intentionally, right. but because they are flesh. Amen? Right. True. Because they are flesh. Amen. Because Brother Billy's flesh, he will fail you right. at times. Amen? Not intentionally. I hope not. Amen? Come on. There is a friend today that never fails. All right. There is a friend today that will hold your hand while you're on your deathbed. Yes. There is a friend today. You may be out there on death row. Come on. There is a friend for you today. Amen. Amen. Prison bars cannot keep him out. Come on. Jesus himself Tell it. knew how it was yeah. not to have a friend. Right. Amen. True. We've, we, he knew what it was to be denied. By a friend. He knew what it was to be betrayed by a friend. Amen. He knew what it was to speak something hard and to look up and most of the crowd was gone. All right. Amen. Come on. He knew what it was for the Bible says in one place that they all forsook him. Yeah. Yeah. They all turned away. They all left. True. So Jesus knew. He was a man that was acquainted with your griefs and your sorrows and the burdens that you bear. He knows what it's like to be alone. Amen. He wants you to know today that you are not alone. Right. Even though you don't feel Him, you can't hear Him, you can't see Him, you're not alone. Amen. He is with you. Jesus is with you. Jesus is with you. Amen. He is your friend today. Right. He is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Hallelujah. Right. The prophet Zechariah mm -hmm. would write of our Savior when he wrote these words. And once you'll say unto Him... What are these wounds in thy hands? Mm -hmm. Then he shall answer, Those with which I was wounded right. in the house of my friends. Yeah. Amen. In the house of my friends. Mm. He knew what it was like yeah. to be wounded by his friends. Yeah. When you feel like today that the best friend you ever had in the world has let you down, has wounded you in some way or another, there is a friend. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. There is a friend yeah. that you can count on this morning. Right. What a friend we have in Jesus. Yeah. He'll never leave us, never forsake us, but He's there with us. This may not excite you today. This may not mean nothing much to you today, but it means something to me. Amen. Because yeah. there's been times when I felt like I was alone. There's been times when I thought, oh God, why? Amen. But he's there. He's there. Brother Billy, how do you know? Did you see a vision? Did you see a light? Was there lightning? Was there thunder? No, I know he's there. Bless. Oh, because his word tells me that he's there. That he'll never leave me. That he's my friend today. And he sticks closer than a brother. 
Amen. So Jesus knew what it was like. Paul knew mm -hmm. what it was like. Oh. Amen. The Apostle Paul would say in 2 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, he would talk about all of the trials and the things that he had faced. 2 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, beginning of the 23rd verse. The last part of the 23rd verse says, In labor is more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths oft. Listen to what he says. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. And a day and a night I have been in the deep. In journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of mine own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and in thirst, in fastings often, in cold and in nakedness. And besides these things that are without, that which cometh upon, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Paul knew what it was like to be somewhere where you felt like you didn't have a friend. Amen. Oh, but he knew of someone. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Even though it seemed like, and there were times that he was in jail. Come on. A lot of his writings he would do in jail. But Jesus was there. Jesus was there. Jesus was there. Amen. He had a friend. Even when the brethren had forsaken him, he had a friend that stuck closer than a brother. Amen. Amen. In times of peril, in times of danger, in times of pain, in times of feeling forsaken, oh, Paul had a friend. A friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Amen. Sister Cindy has a friend Amen. today. Amen. All right. Listen, when you can't get a hold of Brother Billy, yeah. when you can't get a hold of Brother Sleece, yeah. when you can't get a hold of Brother David, yeah. you can always get a hold of him. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. He is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Bless him, Lord. Have you ever heard it said of two people that were so close that one of them was like the other one's shadow? Right. That's why he is with you. Amen. Amen. He's right there. True. He's right there. That's right. He's right there. Come on. Amen. Come on. He's right there. Amen. He's a friend that's too closer than a brother today. Yes, sir. King David knew what it was like. Amen. To be forsaken by friends. Right. His own son. His own son. Right. Tried to kill him and take the throne. Amen. David knew what it was like. Right. It is said of King David, the only man in the history of the world, that it was said by the Lord, I have found me a man that is after my own heart. Yes. David knew what it was like for his earthly friends to turn True. their back. True. He knew what it was like to hide in a cave Amen. from a man that he looked up to, from a man that he had played anointed music for, that had, that had, drawn, that had caused the, the uh, uh, tormenting evil spirits to leave from Saul. Right. A man that he looked up to as God's anointed. He knew what it was like to hide from that man in the cave to Amen. keep him from killing him. True. He knew what it was like to be close enough to kill that man while he was asleep. All right. And not do it. Come on. Because at one time God's anointing was there. Right. David knew what it was like right. to not have a friend in this earthly realm. Come on. Amen. Come on. In Psalms the fifty the fifty fifth chapter, Psalms fifty five. Listen what David says here. Psalms, the 55th chapter. You see, sometimes we feel like we're the only ones that understand this. we got to realize other people have been here before us Amen. and walked the same road. And we've been given example after example after example in the Word of God as to how it worked out in these people's lives and where their help really came from. Psalms 55 and 12 says, For it was not an enemy that reproached me. Then I could have borne it. Neither was it he that hated me 
that did magnify himself against me. Then I would have hid myself from him. But it was thou, a man, mine equal, my guide, mine acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together and walked into the house of God in company. It wasn't my enemy. It was that that showed it was the one that showed himself friendly to me. I, and I, I can imagine that Job's thoughts would have been somewhere along those lines. Amen. I can expect this from my enemies. The Bible called him his friends. Amen. They said it was Job's friends. Amen. I can expect this from my enemies, but my friends, my friends. Oh, but there was a friend that did not forsake him. Right. When Job's wife said, won't you curse your God and die? Mm -hmm. He said, woman, you're foolish. Amen. You speak like a foolish woman. Yeah. Hallelujah. I have a friend today that sticks closer than a brother. Amen. David was saying in Psalms 49 and 9, Yea, mine own familiar friend, in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, hath lifted up his heel against me. Come on. Time and time again we see in the Word of God people in a solitary place. Time after time we see in the Word of God that in that solitary place they have a friend. You have that same friend today. Jesus Christ. He doesn't stand on the other side of the valley saying, I hope they make it through. He doesn't sit on the other side of the storm saying, oh, come on, you can make it. You can make it. No, he's there with you. Because right. he said he'd never leave you. Yeah. He'd never forsake. He said, lo, I am with you always. always. Even to the end of the world, I am with you. Amen. Glory to God, He's a friend. Aren't you glad for that friend today that you can count on? That friend today that holds your hand. That friend today that Brother Mike sings about. He holds my hand. When I begin to tremble, when the winds of this world are blowing strong, Jesus is with me. When the storm clouds gather, He's standing by my side. When I hear the thunder rolls, He holds my hand. When I begin to tremble, when the winds of this world are blowing strong, Jesus is a friend that sticks closer than a brother today. Hallelujah. Go with me to Psalms, the 23rd chapter. Psalms, the 23rd chapter, one of the one of the, 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 the greatest writings in all of the Word of God, one of the most favorite psalms of countless people. It's been on plaques and blankets and everything from coffee cups to, to things that hang on the wall, whatever. Right. Everyone knows about Psalms, the 23rd chapter. Yeah. But if you slow down and you look at it, you'll find the, 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 the nuggets of gold within there that reveal why David could walk through this valley oh. and fear no evil. Oh. Why David could go through this place when King Saul was about to was trying to kill him, whenever he was not just not just the word was out, Saul was on the hunt. Amen. He had his he had his posse, brother sleep, and he was looking for David so he could kill him. Is there a trail here? Is there a sign of him? I heard he was up there. Let's go, guys, so I can get him and kill him. And here we find David hiding in a cave from the man that he looked up to, the one that he considered the anointed one of God. We find him in this cave. Amen. Listen to what he says. You know what he says. You can quote it by heart. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Now, I want to stop there for a minute and ask you why. Why would David fear no evil? Why would David be able to walk through this valley of the shadow of death? How did David know that the Lord would lead him beside the still waters? How did David know that he would restore his soul? Here we find him. Here sitting here in the cave hiding from a man that he looked up to. He said, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. I could try to give you some big spiritual revelation and something deep today, but it don't get much more spiritual revealing than that. David said, I'll fear no evil, not because of my stature, not because of my men, not because of my strength, not because of my knowledge. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. 
He is with you today. He is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It don't matter what you're facing. He is with you this morning. And He will bring you through the other side. He is with you. I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Hallelujah to God. He is a friend today that sticks closer than a brother. Amen. He'll never leave you. Neither death, nor height, nor things present, nor things to come will separate me from this friend that I speak of this morning. Death itself cannot separate me from this friend I speak of this morning. Amen. That's good. Death will separate me. If I die before you do, it will separate me from you. Come on. It will separate you from me. But even death cannot separate us from this friend that I speak of this morning. Amen. I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff they comfort me. Amen. A shepherd's staff was used for a lot of things. Amen. It would direct the sheep where to go. It would push forward those that lagged behind, Brother Sleeves. Mm -hmm. right. It would fetch back those mm -hmm. that were going astray. Mm -hmm. right. Amen. You know what else it would do? It would protect them. Mm -hmm. Oh, my Lord, help me. Mm -hmm. it would, he would use that to yeah, protect right. the sheep. To beat back the bear, to drive back the lion, to drive back the wolf and the rabid dogs that will try and attack, hallelujah, the flock, amen. We have a rod and a staff today, a shield and a buckler that stands ready at the helm to defend and to protect us from every fiery dart of the wicked. And oh, my Lord and my God, this rod and the staff that covers us. The friend that sticks closer than a brother. His word. His word. His word is there for you today. Amen. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Drop down a few verses. The word became flesh. And dwelt among us. I have a friend today. Oh, I said I have a friend today. He's with me. He's with me when I'm on death's doorstep. He's with me as I stand by the great side of a loved one to tell him goodbye. He's with me today when the doctor looks at me and says there is no antidote. When there is no help, Jesus yeah. is with me. He's my friend. He's my friend. Yes. Praise the Lord. When they quarantine you and say, can't nobody come past this mark. Right. Here comes Jesus. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Jesus yeah. is with me. Amen. When the storm clouds gather. Right. You ain't alone today. You are not alone today. Come on. Amen. Jesus is with you. Right. Always. Jesus is with you. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Mm -hmm. You know what else they use the staff for? And you can find the scripture. I don't know if I wrote it down or not. If not, I can find it and give it to you later. They used it to count the sheep. Mm -hmm. All right. The Bible talks about the count of the sheep that passed under the staff. Mm -hmm. Many of the shepherd would hold the staff out there, and as the sheep went under, he would number his sheep. Yeah. Thy rod, and I see you belong to him. Mm -hmm. Come on. And the sheep that passed under that shepherd's rod, they belong to that shepherd. Yes. I wish somebody could get this this morning. I wish I could preach this what I wish I could do. I said those sheep that passed under that were numbered. They were his sheep. That's my sheep. He's passed under my rod. He, oh, he belongs to me. Amen. Same thing goes for you today. Amen. You've passed under that shepherd. If you've come through the blood, if you've been washed in the blood of the Lamb, you have passed under the great shepherd's rod. And you are numbered as one of his today. Not just you, but the very hairs on your head, brothers, please, are numbered today. Amen. You belong to him. Yes. You belong to him. Exactly. That's one of my sheep. Absolutely. That's one of my, and, the, and the same rod that you passed over to be numbered. 
Right. Under the beam is the same rod that'll tap you on the tail when you get out of line. Right. It's the same rod that'll hook you around the neck and pull you over this way and say, hey, this yes. is where we're going. Yes. Not over there, over here. Right. It's the same rod that'll get behind you and gouge you. Come on, come, come on. on. You're dragging up the rear. Mm -hmm. It's the same rod. Listen. As the shepherd walks and he leads the sheep. Come on. <laughs> Listen to me. Oh, I wish, you could, I wish we could get this. I wish we could get this. Maybe the shepherd went into a dip. And you couldn't quite see him. And the sheep might look up. Don't see the shepherd, but I see a rod. Come on. Oh, my Lord. Come on. I don't see the shepherd, but I see, follow the rod. Yeah. Follow the staff. <laughs> because where the staff was... The shepherd was. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Follow the rod today. Follow the staff because where the staff is, the shepherd is. Amen. You lose me when you lose the rod. You lose me when you lose the staff. Amen. If you don't have this to back up what you say, don't waste my time. Amen. Because this is the rod. This is the staff. Where this is, he is. Amen. Where this is, he is. True. David said, Thy word yeah. have I hid in my heart. That I might not sin against you. Yes. Thy word. You. Right. You. Yes. He's his word. Well, brother Bill, I just right. told you. His word. You cannot separate him from his word. True. He's with me. He's with me. His staff. His rod and staff, they comfort Amen. me. True. Verse 5. Thou preparest a table before. before me in the presence of mine enemies. Now, what does that tell me? That tells me that when my enemies surround me, if he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies, that lets me know that when my enemies surround me, I'm not alone. Right. Amen? Come on. If he's preparing a table before me, he must be there. All right. Amen? Come on. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I'll go with you all the way to the end of the world. Amen? I'm with you. Sure. I'm with you. He wants you to know, I'm with you. Sure. You see, we, we've got to have somebody we got to have something, something substantial, or something, I can't get the right, but some kind of material, something to grab a hold of. Amen. Amen. We're like the little girl that, that her mama tucked into bed and, and, and said that you know there was lightning and, and stuff flashing and, and the little girl was scared and, and mama said, it's okay, Jesus is with you. You'll be fine, Jesus is with you. Yeah. So the mama leaves the room and a few minutes later, ah, mommy! Mommy comes running back in there and she says, what's the matter? She said, the light is up. She said, I told you don't be afraid. Jesus is with you? The little girl said, yeah, but I'd like to have somebody that's got some skin I'd wrap my arms around right now. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. That's where we are. Right. We feel like we look at it with our carnal eyes. Right. Nobody's here but me. Mm -hmm. I'm in a solitary place. Mm -hmm. Nobody understands. Nobody loves me. Mm -hmm. If we could just see past that through eyes of faith into His Word, we would realize He never leaves us. He's always there. Amen. He is our friend that sticks closer That's than right. a brother. Amen. Amen. Come on. We lean too much on the arm of the flesh. Right. Amen. But we, it, it is part of us. I'm not bashing you over the head. I do it too. It's part of us. Come on. And when the arm of the flesh lets us down, we get all, oh, I can't believe that. And God's, I, I told you, you got to lean on me. Mm. You have to lean on me. The arm of the flesh will let you down sometimes intentionally. Most of the time, not intentionally. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. Either way, you're still let down. Come on. Amen? We need to realize we have a present help in time of trouble today. He is with us. Yeah. He prepares a table for us in the presence of our Come enemies. On. Listen to what he says. Thou anointest my head with oil. Where's he at? He's in the valley. Right. And can you, you know that from, from, the, from the first, some people just pick out that one part in the middle. But from Psalms 1, uh, 23 and 1 all the way down to Psalms 23 and 6, he is in the valley. He's talking about the valley, Brother Sleeves, whenever he says that the shepherd leads him beside the still waters and the green pastures and he restores his soul. This is a valley experience that David is talking about. Come on. He anoints my head with oil. oil. You know something else I learned? I learned that the shepherd... See, the sheep... Whenever they would, you know, try to eat the grass and they would put their heads down and they'd do that, they'd get these raw spots on their heads from where their head would hit against the ground when they were eating. And the shepherd, to soothe that pain and to heal that, would take the oil and he would pour it 
over the head of the sheep. There are times in life that we get all bruised up and banged up from beating our head, not so much to ground, but against the brick wall that we feel like is in front of us. Amen? Whatever the situation may be, things, circumstances, stuff we're going through has left us a little bruised and a little scarred, Brother Sweet. But in this valley, He will pour in the oil. He'll pour that oil to heal. We're talking about a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He anoints my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Amen. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. David would also write in Psalm 46 and 1, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Amen. He is our friend that sticks closer than a brother today. You feel like you're alone. You ain't. Right. Brother David, you feel like you're facing it all by yourself. You ain't. Amen. Amen. True. You, should we be able to count on one another for prayer? Amen. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Should you be able to count on your friends to be there, to listen to you, to pray for you, to lift you up with the word of encouragement? Amen. Absolutely. Amen. Right. But more important, most important, you can count on Him Jesus. to be there all the time. Jesus. It don't matter what the, if it's the midnight hour. Amen. Paul and Silas Amen. sitting in the Philippian jail. Amen. Amen. But they were not there alone. Amen. Amen. Daniel in the lion's den. Amen. Oh, looked like he would have been forsaken. Nobody there but him and the hungry lions. Oh, but he had a friend. Amen. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. Amen. Looked like everybody else done bowed the knee to the, to the graven image. And they've been thrown in to be burned alive. But they had a friend. Amen. You may feel like you're in the lion's den all alone, but you got a friend today. You may feel like you're in the fiery furnace and ain't nobody there but you in the flames, but you have a friend today. There is a friend that sticks closer than a brother, and his name is Jesus Christ. Amen. And if you turn to him, put your faith in him, he will never leave you. Listen, if you're out there today and you say, God left me, oh, you got it backwards. If anybody left, it was you that did the leaving. Amen. Because he will never leave you. He will never leave you. Amen. He is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. In the midst of your trial, He's there. Yes, sir. In the midst of your circumstance, He is there. Absolute. In the belly of the whale, He is there. Exactly. Amen. True. Jonah, Praise the Lord. swallowed by the whale, Praise God. sitting on the ocean's bottom. Uh -huh. Can't get no lower than that. Surely he's alone. No. David would write, if I make my bed in hell, mm -hmm. you're there. Right. Mm -hmm. You're there. Come on. What David in essence was saying, you can run the farthest point from A from from A to B to the farthest point, and God's still there. Amen. You can take off running, you can try to hide, you can try to get away from him. You can be like Elijah. Go up there and hide yourself in a cave and have a pity party. Exactly. God's there. Amen. God's the, I've been there. Yeah. Amen. I've been to the place where I thought that's it. Amen. That's, Amen. That's, it. Yeah. that's it. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Then a still small voice said, No, it ain't. Hold on. <laughs> Amen. Just hold on a little Amen. longer. Help is on the way. Amen. Help has already arrived. Amen. Yeah. So if you find yourself in the valley, and I'm trying to close, if you find yourself in the valley today, there is a friend. If you find yourself in the lion's den today, there is a friend. If you find yourself in the fiery furnace today, there is a friend. If you find yourself in the midst of a trial today, there is a friend. If you find yourself in the hog pen today, all of your good time friends have left because Papa's money done ran out. You still got a friend. Oh, hallelujah. You still got a friend today. Amen. What do you think caused that prodigal son to come to himself? He was not alone. Amen. He was not alone. You are not alone today. Amen. You are not alone today. Right. You say, but Brother Billy, I did this. Oh, yeah. But he's still there for you. Yes, sir. Call on his name. Yes. Call on his name. I'm not present. Call on his name. He's with you. Come on. He's with you. It may seem like it at times. It may feel like it at times. It may look like it at times. Right. But if we'll turn to His Word, if we'll lean on His promises, Come on. we'll soon find yes. we are not alone. 
Amen. Jesus is with me. He is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Amen. Listen to the words of this song. I don't know who wrote it. Maybe Mike Upright. Peter walked upon Peter walked upon that which would have drowned other men. Little David slew the giant when his life should have ended. Moses turned his back on Pharaoh's army of men and stood and faced the waters with his wooden staff in hand. But I believe he whispered, I have a friend. He's like no other. Come on. The earth is but his footstool and he rides upon the wind. Praise the Lord. And he's never going to leave me even to the very end. Amen. I have a friend. Oh, you have a friend today. Amen. You have a friend today. John the Revelator saw him. He was high and lifted up. And as long as he's beside you, friend, don't you be giving up. Don't magnify your problems like God's not big enough. Just call old Satan closer and he won't act so tough when you whisper, I have a friend. Oh. He's like no other. The earth is but his footstool and he rides upon the wind. And he's never going to leave me even to the very end. You know why? Because I have a friend. Oh, I have a friend. Amen. My, 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 my. Some people say you'll be hearing from my attorney. Amen. You'll be hearing from my friend. Amen. Hallelujah. I have a friend today. There is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He's there with you. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're facing, he is our friend. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm done. Hallelujah. Someone else this morning have anything before we go?